everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part three of my Uma Neko Let's Play. So in the last episode, we were introduced to the rest of the family and uh, learned a little bit more about this uh, Bea Tariche character, as well as uh, some of the strained relationships between the servants and the family. So we're going to get into it, and we're going to see what happens next. Let's go. Yes, yeah, welcome. ご愛が優れられないとのことだ。せっかくこうして1年ぶりの会合に集まってくれた諸君と昼食を共にできないことを非常に残念にしておられた。ゴード、ランチを始めてくれ。かしこまりました。それでは本日の昼食を始めさせ
As a result, how much of the fortune borrowed from the main family could be repaid? Or, alternatively, how much would be borrowed for future business ventures? What lessons had they learned, and what could they learn from their mistakes? It seems that topics like these had been discussed very seriously in the past. My dad called it a bed of nails. Apparently, it used to be a very serious family meeting where one would commonly be showered with harsh and angry voices, and even get slapped in the face despite being well past the age for it. However, that was all a thing of the past. By now, everyone had achieved success in their own independent business ventures, and it was on the road to becoming a normal yearly get-together. Even so, being asked by Grandfather about the current state of play was an extremely stress-inducing event. And while to us grandchildren it was nothing more than a simple meeting, to our parents it was still a real stomach ache. The absence of the man responsible for all this, whatever the reason behind it, must surely have made today's lunch even more delicious. The phrase, when the cat is away, the mice will play, comes to mind. Well then, let me introduce Jessica's father, whose face I haven't seen for six years. The man sitting to my dad's left is his older brother and the father of Jessica, Uncle Kraus. This name is sure as easy to read. Kraus. After so many weird names, it wraps your sense of what's normal, and you start to think, Hey, what's wrong with Kraus? Sounds pretty cool, actually. Just like with Aunt Nats Just like with Aunt Natsui, I don't have any memories of speaking with Uncle Kraus. He had never been one to talk to children, and I felt like he was always talking with the adults, just like Aunt Natsui. From the way my dad talked about him, it seems he used to be a pretty spiteful and unreasonable person. If what dad said is true, he used to be very domineering as the oldest sibling, and was hated by Auntie Eva, Aunt Rosa, and the rest of the family. Odd, considering they're all having fun chatting together. Well, I guess even if their relationship was bad when they were children. Sometimes when people grow up and go their separate ways, their relationship changes. That's probably what it is. After all, they have children of about the same age. Since they shared similar family environments, they probably all profit by exchanging opinions. Maybe because of that, the parents' circle had been deep in conversation for a while now about the exams Jessica and I are going to be taking. Jessica, in order to escape the discussion of exams with the old bastard sitting on her left, was purposely facing to the right, firing off topic after topic so as not to give him an opening. Okay, before we go any further... I believe with Uncle Krauss being introduced, uh, oh no, we're still missing someone. There's one more person over here that has not been introduced. So Krauss, uh, Kinzo's first child, leads the family conference as the eldest of the four siblings. However, the other siblings suspect he plans to claim the entire fortune for himself, and the antagonism between him and the others grows increasingly severe. A real estate investor, he's put a vast amount of money into the development of a resort. However, his results have been harshly criticized. Moving on, let's look at the end opposite from Uncle Kraus and the others. In the very last seat at the table, an old gentleman with a sturdy physique sat facing curious on. This was my first time meeting him. I- Oh, this must be the last one. I had only just been introduced to him, but it seems that he's grandfather's personal doctor, a man called Nanjo. Apparently, he used to own a huge clinic on the nearby Nijima Island, but he turned it over to his son and began living a life of leisure in his old age. He's known as grandfather since the very beginning when the mansion was first constructed on this island. They have a history going back several decades. There we go, last one. Nanjo, Kinzo's attending physician and longtime friend, once ran a hospital in Nijima, but turned it over to his son and now enjoys his old age in peace. One of the very few people that Kinzo trusts now that he is held captive by an unrelenting suspicion of others. Big hearted by nature, he has maintained a long friendship with Kinzo, unperturbed by his tendency to fly into a rage at the slightest provocation. I thought he might be Grandfather's companion in his suspicious hobbies, but surprisingly, it seems that he's Grandfather's chess partner. I see. That kind of hobby does seem very like our Grandfather with his love of Western style. You could probably also call him the only person able to enter Rokunjima who is neither a family member nor a servant. From listening in on his conversation with the woman folk seated near him, he gave the impression of a calm old gentleman. Considering he's managed to put up with our short-tempered Grandfather for so long, I'm sure his big heart is nothing to laugh at. Still, even if he is his doctor, having someone from outside of the Ishiromiya family attending the family conference is a little odd. From that fact, I imagine that Grandfather's condition has grown much worse, and it may even be one of the major topics of discussion at the family conference. George Aniki was saying it too. In the past year, Grandfather has been continuously pronounced as having very little time to left to live. It's awful to talk about, but Grandfather is an extremely rich man. 
the time of his death, his wealth will suddenly be released along with our parents' stomach acid, surely leading to some serious ulcers. With this kind of thing, the greater the number of ways it must be split, the more trouble will be caused splitting it. I wonder if this is what's going to cause the, cause the murders to start happening. Maybe it has nothing to do with this witch, this Beatrice, and maybe it's just a simple murder mystery of the siblings killing each other so that they can have more of the, uh, you know, the pot of gold, as it were. But I feel like that's too straightforward for this game. This kind of talk would probably also be included in the family conference. Oh well, it's not like it has anything to do with us children. Finally, even though he's absent. Let me introduce our grandfather. The person who should be sitting in that seat of honor is Ushiro Mio Kenzo. It really sucks. He gave everyone else in the family these weird names, but he himself uses one which is conservative as all hell. If only his name were written with those same characters for gold and vault. But he lets us call him Goldsmith or something. That'd be totally awesome. As you can probably gather from all the talk about him, he's a frightening person with an extremely short temper. Because I'm just his grandkid, I haven't met him since I was in elementary school six years ago. I don't remember ever having been beaten by him, but it seems our parents were raised with an iron fist. The earlier conversation between my dad and Uncle Kraus about who should go to try and convince Grandfather to come out seems oddly funny if you take this into account. In order to tell Grandfather's story, you have to take yourself all the way back to before the Showa era, 1926 to 1989, to recount the tale of the Ushiromiya family. Until the Meiji and Tashio eras, the Ushiromiya family was great and prosperous. They owned several spinning mills and were very wealthy people who merely had to fall about laughing while the money rolled in. Incidentally, Grandfather, as a member of a branch family, originally had nothing to do with the main family. Distantly separated from the head's inheritance, he apparently had very little involvement with the headhouse. However, during the Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923, the mansion owned by the Ushiromiya main house in Odawara was flattened. The spinning mills in Tokyo were all burned down in a huge fire, and the Ushiromiya family lost most of its wealth and family members in an instant. And it then became a matter of who would become the heir to the main family, and as it turned out, none were left except for Kinzo, who was as far removed from the main family line as they come. Kinzo himself later said it was such good luck, it was as though fate itself had been turned upside down. With that, Grandfather's ordinary life did a 180. He was entrusted with reviving the wealth that the dying Ushiromiya family had almost completely lost. Of course, just because you suddenly dump a task on someone doesn't mean they can do squat to accomplish it. I doubt the people around him were expecting much. But this is where Grandfather began to display his extraordinarily talent and good luck. Grandfather used all the family funds and everything from the hair on his head to his toenails as collateral to borrow a massive amount of money, created a gigantic supply of funds, and immediately started a business. It was like tumbling down a hill on a bike without any brakes and then jumping onto a neighboring bike, and then another one. Just like some crazy street performer. Probably anyone would have thought that Grandfather had no business ability. But with an unbelievable amount of good luck and miracles, with coincidences piling up and every chance taken advantage of, before anyone knew it, he had forged powerful connections with the Allied forces. At the time, MacArthur and the GHQ were in charge of Japan. Grandfather, in a twinkle of the eye, began succeeding in business under the protection of the occupying forces, quickly becoming very rich. At this point, it was no longer luck, but information that won the day. So, he was talking about Beatrice and how he would give up all of his, all of his wealth and everything uh, in order to see her smile. I wonder maybe if he prayed to her for those good luck and the coincidences, and then she, like, if she's real, and then she's like, okay, but you will be indebted to me, uh, for me to help you succeed. He must have made some seriously thick connections with the occupying forces. Grandfather knew about the emergency demands that would be made for the Korean War before they happened. No, more than that, he must have foreseen those special procurements and started penetrating those markets from the very beginning. History textbooks say that all of Japan made a large profit off the emergency demands for the Korean War. That wasn't the case in reality. Only a very limited number of the super-rich played the money game and made an easy profit. Most of the citizens remained poor. In other words, Grandfather was an extremely lucky member of this group of winners. This all happened during the year 1950, I think. 
And since the year of the Great Kanto earthquake was 1923, that means Grandfather was able to revive the near-dead Ushiromiyo family to a level even higher than it had been before in the span of only 20 to 30 years. With that, you think he would revive the main house in Odawara, but for some reason he went and did something as crazy as buying an entire small island in the Uzo Archipelage... Uh, archipelago. Buying an entire island is not something you can ordinarily do today. However, Grandfather was clever. He contacted the GHQ and applied for the establishment of a marine resource base. He acquired this island as a business property and then reneged on it and claimed it as his own plot of land. After the war, there were prevention measures against food shortages, and furthermore, he had the sponsorship of the GHQ, which meant that nobody could oppose him. It seems that Tokyo provided the land for next to no money at the time. Tokyo later made repeated complaints for the land to be returned, but not much could be done due to the involvement of the GHQ, even though they'd been pushed into it. No doubt he'd bribed everyone there was to bribe. In the end, the city gave up in frustration. Grandfather, with considerable skill and blessed with good luck, managed to weather the stormy seas of that period, obtaining a vast fortune on his own island. Of course, it wasn't all luck. He was skilled with English, and this was cultivated by his Western obsession. It was by using that as a weapon he was able to make inroads into the GHQ. A mansion was immediately built on the island. That would be this mansion. Grandfather, who had always loved the West, made this once uninhabited island, Rokunjima, a canvas upon which he could realize his dreams to his heart's content. The Western mansion that he'd always imagined, overflowing with emotion, the beautiful garden where various roses had been planted and a private beach where nobody other than himself would ever be permitted to leave a footprint. To have this much would be every man's dream. After that, making good use of his huge fortune, he became a large stockholder in the extremely stable iron and steel industry, and was able to live an easy and comfortable life just using the dividends. Well, he's just that incredible. This kind of person normally gets portrayed after the fact as having the ability to foresee and predict the future or something. My grandfather denies all that. Repeatedly saying he was simply blessed with extraordinary luck. It's gotta, it's gotta do with the witch. It's gotta do. All this talk about luck and being able to see the future. And there's another uh, character in another game where she could sort of see the future. Will that come into play? Who knows? Anyway, even a lord like that, with all of his dreams made real, can't help but grow increasingly awed when locked up alone on an island. Everyone knows he's been obsessed with the West for a very long time but none of our parents really know when his bizarre black magic hobby began. Perhaps his love of black magic began way back when he first became fascinated with the West. Or possibly his miraculous stretch of good luck which allowed him to revive the family caused him to feel a mysterious power in himself. At some point, Grandfather began to make the research of black magic his life's work, filling his study up with suspicious books, chemicals, and magical items as he became increasingly bizarre. These being the few remaining years of a person's successful in life, of a person's successful life, those around him warmly watched over him, feeling the time was his to spend as he pleased, or so I hear, but no way in hell that's true. They probably were just driven away, thinking, that's disturbing, I don't want to get involved. Well, that war-torn period was a time for big gambles, with both opportunities and risks. I'd like to see Grandfather do so well if he'd been born in this time period. He would have had no opportunities and would probably have advanced like a chess piece from mandatory education to college at a leisurely, leisurely pace, never becoming more than an average company employee. If that had happened, he'd probably be sitting here with the rest of us, regaling us with tales of a shitty boss. No, no, not here, in the dining hall of a mansion. We might have been around a table at some bar. If that were the case, I'm sure this would have been a much more comfortable family conference. Alright, that's enough talk about the old geezer who won't pop off. More importantly, let's talk about this incredible lunch. Everyone let out a big laugh. Damn it, you say that even though you love those cheap pubs. Bokumo, Shigotono Tsugode, Mezrashi, Tokoro de Shokujo Surukoto Marukedo, 
それらと比べてもこれはかなりのものだよ合田さんは多分その道じゃ少しは知られた人だったんじゃないかなよくは知らねえんだけどよ老舗ホテルでのれん分けだか派閥の分裂だかややこしいことがあってよそのトラブルで辞めざるを得なくなっちまったんだってさそれでその時偶然おふくろが使用人の求人を出してたわけなんだよ As Goda cleared away the empty plates, he began to recount his own eventful past, never losing his smile. I'm sus of this guy. I, I, I have been almost from the beginning. The world is a difficult thing. But, that's why I'm here today. 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 限られた方々にだけ喜んでいただくために繊細なお仕事ができるのもとても楽しいことでございます To bring it in, and then she would be blamed for it, and he gets away scot free. これもすべて機会をくださった奥様のおかげです。Godasan respectfully bowed his head towards Aunt Natsui. So apparently, she's quite an interesting character. She seems very closed off, but apparently, there's a reason for it, which I'm interested to find out. 応募のあった中で、ゴーダが一番腕が良かったからです。客観的判断に基づくもので、市場はありませんので、感謝には及びません。Oh man, why does Aunt Natsui always have to speak so frankly? If only she spoke more gently, she might give off a different impression. Shen and Chen and Kumasawa san entered from the hallway with a serving cart. Don't throw Shen under the bus again, she seems so sweet. Goda san and the others laid out the beautifully adorned dessert. I guess it's true when they say you have another stomach for desserts. I thought that being fed all the delicious food had totally filled me up. But as soon as I laid eyes on the dessert, my stomach started yelling more. I don't know much about desserts, but this looked really good. A white pudding like substance was garnished with two shades of red sauce, and elegant rose petals adorned the dish. When you dine on such magnificent food as this, first it is distributed in front of everyone, and then the chef takes a moment to extol the virtues of his creation. Until he had finished, as a rule, you don't touch the food. However, Maria, who had no experience with these ceremonious rules, got excited by this beautiful and delicious looking dessert and jumped into the fray as soon as it was placed before her. Oh, Rose is not going to be happy about that. Auntie Rosa scolded her, calling it bad manners, but George responded by saying, No, no, it's alright. <laughs> Maria exclaimed as she sampled the two colored sauces. Guessing... I'm guessing they probably have to be mixed together. <laughs> Apparently, the two sauces were one sweet and one sour. Despite it being bad manners, I also stuck my little finger in and licked it. Whoa, one of them was sour enough to make you pucker up. If it were yellow, I'd just. Assist... I would have. Ex... Ugh. If it were yellow, I would have suspected lemon, but I couldn't guess what kind of sourness would be red. I decided to ask Shannon, who was putting away the serving cart behind us. Shannon, what kind of sauce is this spice? Oh, Sh Shannon, come on, get your act together, girl. Shannon Chan hesitated to speak. Maybe she was just setting the table and doesn't really know. She hesitated a bit, mu、uh, a bit much for that, though. Did I ask something wrong? Or did they use something we'd be better off not knowing about? While Aunt Natsui acted as though she had a headache, Kuwasama san, who was sitting the other side of the table, began to laugh with a ho ho ho. <laughs> Is it blood? I know there's blood pudding. I don't think blood is sour, though. I've never really. I mean, I've had blood from like a steak or something, but I wouldn't count it as sour. But then again, she could be lying because she's known to be a little bit of a liar. 
Kumasawa-san leaned across from the other side of the table. She'd asked to borrow my ears, so I leaned forward too. Their interest caught Jessica, Georgia, Aniki, and of course, Maria also put their ears closer. Don't be ridiculous, we all thought, horrified. Only Myri accepted it, nodding with a uh-huh. <laughs> When Maria started clamoring that mackerel was sour, the adults were unable to contain their laughter. Auntie Rosa said to Maria in a small voice while turning red. Ah, now I remember it perfectly. Kumasawa-san was always this kind of character, wasn't she? I think I remember her tricking me about all kinds of things when I was young as well. Amongst all of them, the most painful must have been that one. That flimsy black stuff you get in Chinese food. Uh, Kikurage mushrooms. She told me it was penguin meat, and I went all around school like a smartass telling everyone, didn't I? I like her, I hope she doesn't die, and I also hope she doesn't turn out to be bad. Goda-san looked a little put out from having his masterpiece laughed at in such a strange way. But after clearing his throat once, he introduced the dessert to us. So, I will introduce the dessert to you. Today, I will introduce the dessert to you. I will introduce the dessert to you. I will introduce the dessert to you. I will introduce the dessert to I will introduce the dessert to you. I will introduce the to Hmm, okay, so I have used rose hip oil uh, on my face, and I mean, I haven't eaten it, but it definitely has an interesting smell to it. Huh. Man, I almost want to applaud before I've even eaten it. It's like when you take medicine, you know how it seems to work better when you've read the instructions. Thanks to Godasan elaborating on the details of this dessert, I feel like he's knocked it up another notch. Seriously, should you call him meticulous or just talented? The dessert was probably planned from the beginning, but he took a cue from our stopping in front of the Rose Garden earlier today, and displayed an incredible timely awareness of the season by just adding a few rose petals from that garden. This combination of sweet and sour was also exquisite. If it was just sweet, you'd get used to it and become bored halfway through. I was like, really? I'd, I'd never get tired of my desserts. I don't care if they're sweet all the way through. That's what I like about them. But by bringing in the sour sauce at that point, you get a really vivid taste. And then, once you return to the sweet sauce, all the sourness in your mouth is replaced with enjoyable sweetness again. I'm sure everyone else felt the same way. Every time Godasan passed by one of the seats, someone praised the taste in his creation. How相変わらず見事です。お客様をおもてなしするにあたいします。恐れ入ります。奥様、ご存知ですか？ローズヒップには頭痛に効く効果もあるそうですよ。奥様に特にお気に入りいただけるかと思い、特別にご用意させていただき
これは困ったゴーダのタイムをもっと良くしないと引き抜かれてしまいそうだ<笑>そうした方がいいわねじゃないと引き抜かれて三色が熊沢さんのサバ料理にされちゃうわよ<笑>これはこれは敵美酒ございますすっかり根に持たれてしまいまして。Everyone let out a huge laugh. According to Jessica, Kumasawa san's mackerel jokes were a type of running gag, and our parents had long since gotten used to it. Kumasawa san often claimed that mackerel contained precious nutrients that could do things like prevent aging and make people smarter. It seemed that while it couldn't stop the outward signs of aging, it helped prevent aging on the inside. Since she was still healthy enough to tell these kinds of jokes at her age, that benefit must be the real thing. <laughs> それでは失礼いたします夕食にはふるってたくさんのサバ料理をお召し上がりいただきますのでどうぞご期待くださいませね<笑>期待してるよ今晩はしめサバでキュッとしゃれ込みたいぜそれは素敵ねついでに日本酒の美味しいのも出てこないかしらええー、ございますよ六軒島名物のサバ焼酎なるものがございまして。クマサワさん、together with Shannon Chan, bowed and pushed the serving cart away. Amusingly, Goda さん、who looked just as though his stock had been stolen from him, explained very seriously that tonight's dinner would actually be calf steak. あの、クマサワさん。As she pushed the serving cart, Shannon bowed her head very deeply. <laughs> Kumasawa san played dumb, but it was no accident she had thrown Shannon a lifeline. Back when Badler had asked for the details of the dessert, Shannon had unfortunately hesitated. There may have been several ways to dodge the question, but all of them should have been delivered deftly. Shannon, who hesitated when hard pressed for a response, was always suffering because of this small weakness. Well, I guess she believes herself to be furniture, right? And furniture shouldn't talk, I guess? But, Shannon, you gotta know these things. Like, you gotta know the tea that you're serving, and, like, ah, <laughs> I still like her, but it's like I understand everybody's got their weaknesses, but you should kind of know the, the details of things that you're serving to people. If only Shannon, like Oda, had a little bit of the craftiness needed to skillfully shake off a mistake, her days would be a little more comfortable. But I understand. When you make one mistake, and you ruminate over it, then you're gonna make more mistakes, and the more mistakes you make, the harder it is to come back from it. I'm the same way, so. This weakness was especially unfortunate considering how flawlessly she could handle her work. Of course, there were those who well understood Shannon's meek nature and her inability to remember to gloss over her mistakes, which is why Kumasawa, sa、uh, Kumasawa came to her aid without hesitation. すみませんシフト表を確認していませんでしたそうそうオーブンでこれからちょっとサバを焼こうと思ってるんですよできたらお休みの前にちょっと手伝ってくれると嬉しいですねは,はい喜んでお手伝いさせていただきます To Shannon, Kumasawa was like a mother among the servants Why do I have a feeling Kumasawa is gonna die? She's too nice The dining hall needed to be cleaned up, so we were chased out. Instead, tea would be served in the parlor. It seemed that they would be preparing the black tea that Auntie Rosa had brought for Aunt Natsui. Maria insisted she also wanted to drink the black tea, but was rejected by the old bastard who told her and the rest of us kids to go play outside. フルフルとくりかしちょるはいマリアは海がいい海がいいあら素敵じゃない砂浜で遊ぶなんて普段はなかなかできないものね
そっかよしじゃあみんなで浜辺でも行こうぜああ行こう行こうマリア服を濡らさないようにするのよ靴もよああ濡らさない<笑>素直で可愛いバトラ君マリアちゃんの面倒ちゃんと見てあげてねおうよ任せろおうお前も切り絵に頼まれると素直で可愛いじゃねえかたまには俺の言うことも素直に聞いてみろよへっまっぴらごめんどぜいこうぜみんな<笑> They were replaced by Genji, who pushed a serving cart and prepared the black tea. The parlor was filled with sublime aroma, which entertained everyone while they waited to appease their thirst. Rudolph, no tokoro, a kazokna kaga, e j a m a i k Yo y k o t o d a Yo s e yo. Aniki no tokoro ni makeruze. So yo. Jessica chan. Honto ni kawaira shku so datta jana. これも夏日姉さんの教育のたまもの I don't know if they're being sarcastic but Jessica I would the innocent is not the word I would use to describe her どうも Natsui answered coldly With that the conversation halted and the parlor became silent Possibly because he couldn't stand it anymore Hideyoshi broke the silence while performing an exaggerated gesture しかし成長は早いもんやでいつまでも子供だと思っとったが図体はみるみるでかくなりいつの間にか大人の仲間入りやバトラ君なんか見違えたで体は大きくなりましたけどまだ子供ですうちの主人もいまだに子供ですけれど<笑>子供と大人の境ってどこなのかしらね私いまだに大人になったって自覚が持てない<笑>情けないじゃないか一児の母の言うことではないそうねうん、mm. so Rosa has a thing where she doesn't feel like she's grown up maybe why, that's why she's overcompensating by being so like protective and also scolding of Maria is because she wants to feel like she is a grown up and she's raising a child and she wants to raise her to be obedient and you know polite And not treating Maria like a kid. I know it is. When Ava smiled with sharp sarcasm, everything seemed to get more tense. It felt like the smell of the tea that had been prepared so carefully just flew out the window. Oh, here we're, gonna, we're really going to get to see this family dynamic now. The facade is going to be cracking a little bit. Uh oh, Rosa smiled with a vague expression. Whether she agreed or disagreed, she knew she would earn the displeasure of either her brother or her sister. It was a bit of a worldly wisdom she needed to learn as the youngest sibling. The real reason they're here, huh? As Rudolph glanced over the faces of all present, some let out a slight sigh and some let out a small look of resignation cross their face. This was the unavoidable true agenda. Kyonen no jiten de yome sanka gets that tanda. De gotoa, sudeni minus kyu kagets de kotojenek. It's omukaenga awatete ston de kurukamo wakarane jotai de kotoda ze. Toshu samawa, ima demo kenzai de oraremas. Kono yona fuonto na hanashio, himo akari uch kara nasoro to surinado. Ludolf san no shoki o tangawazaro emasen. Taga na natsi san. こういうしょっぱい話はいざことがあってからじゃ遅いんや今が元気だからこそ余裕あるうちにしとくもんなんやでこれも財産のエチケットみたいなもんや諸君の関心は親父殿のようじゃないか南条先生あなたから説明してくださいませんか彼らもそれをお望みらしい
<clears throat> Nanjo, standing by the window and staring out at the rose garden, let out a single cough when he realized he was being called. Nanjo, まず初めに私が去年申し上げました余命 Maybe someone's gonna choose to speed that up a little bit and do it themselves. Karadagayuareba,ayokumonarimasla,soreo Maybe. And maybe this is also because of Beatrice, where he is still alive because maybe she's extending his life a little bit. Whether this is a case of like Higurashi again, like how much of this, if any, is supernatural and how much of this is rooted in reality? ましてや、あのような強いお酒をたしなまれ続けては、とてもとても。崖っぷちなのも酒のせい。流れてるのも酒のせいか。主語のおやじらしいね。それで先生もちろん、見込みで結構なんですけども、お父様、来年の今日ま
Receiving an examination and then not following the advice given made the whole thing pointless. つまりおさらいすると、相変わらず余命は三ヶ月、禁止のまま、あとどれだけ長らえるか見当もつかねえってことだ。ルドルフさん、言葉を少し慎まれてはいかがですか。ああすまんね。昔からこういう口の聞き方なんだ。勘弁してくれ。南条先生のご意見はわかりました。クラウス兄さんから見て。どうなの<笑>実を言うと南條先生とは異なる意見だねとても余命3ヶ月の重病人とは思えないというのが本心だ怒鳴り声は相変わらず健在でいつぶん殴られるかとヒヤヒヤしっぱなしだよ長男にだけ親父の世話を押し付けるのは実にフェアではないね<笑>来世では俺より後に生まれろよさて話を戻そうぜそんなわけで公正中立なお医者の先生の見解じゃいつお隠れになっちまってもおかしくない状態だ兄貴には悪いがここは専門家の意見を採用させてもらうぜとなりゃ決して親父の財産を話し合うことは時期尚早ではないってことさお父様の個人資産はおそらく数百億にも届くでしょうねでもそれは綺麗な現金で揃ってるわけじゃないわお誕生会のケーキみたいに綺麗にナイフが入ってカットできるほど単純じゃないでしょ姉貴の例えは面白いなそうさケーキの上にはイチゴやらチョコの家やらが乗ってて綺麗に当分するのが難しいことだってあるだろ all I'm getting from all this is all this talk about food is making me hungry それを加味してどういうふうにナイフを入れるのか先に相談しておくのは大切なことだと思うぜ。You stick the knife in some people, you get a bigger cut of cake, if you know what I'm saying. それを、当主様が存命のうちからさも高いなされたかのように声高に議論される皆さんの気が知れませんあら、必要な話よだって遺産相続はその時点で直ちに行われなきゃならないものよ。ましてや栄光ある後宮家の財産は莫大事前に入念な相談が必要なことはお分かりでしょうが当家の資産はあなたのご実家とはお違いなんだから失礼な私の実家は関係ありませんあなたは何を言うのよ予算を変えば夏日さん、カニな口が悪いのは許したってな。ヒデオシは彼を見つけたことを見つけたことを見つけたことを見つけたことを見つけたことを見つけたことを見つけたことを見つけたことを見つけたことを見つけたこ I'd be the same as Nandre. I'd be like, this is getting awkward as fuck. I'm outie. Nandre rose from his seat and exited the parlor. This may well have been a normal act of courtesy expected of an outsider, but even so, his back was watched by several glances envious of his ability to escape. After the doctor has, had exited and his footsteps had disappeared into the distance, Kraus recrossed his legs. おやじ殿の余命は短い遺産分配について早急かつ具体的な協議に入りたい何を焦っているのかね確かにお前たちの言う通り後宮家の財産を算定し分配するのは簡単なことではないだろうなればじっくりと算定すべきじゃないのかねお前たちは今晩のうちにもケーキを切り分けたいと焦っているように見えるそうだろうローザ何を焦ることがあるのかねあ,あ焦ってるわけじゃないでも兄弟の間での取り決めは必要それはいつでもいいことだけれども I know that Kraus really seems to pick on Rosa a lot maybe because she can be easily bullied or swayed because she's the youngest one and he intimidates her お父様の具合が悪くなっていてその日が近づいているというなら先に話だけしておいてもそれは請求とは言わないと思うし。Rosa sneaked a glance at Ava and Rudolph. As the youngest daughter in the family, being cross examined by the eldest was harsh. ほう
それはお前の本心かね兄弟で一番素直で綺麗な心を持っていたお前がそんなことを言い出すとは思えんねそこの二人に吹き込まれたんじゃないのかね<笑>よせよ兄貴ローザだって兄弟だぜ親父の遺産に公平な権利がある関心を持つのは当然じゃねえか親父だっていつかは必ず死ぬしそれは遠い未来の話でもないむしろ兄貴が悠長すぎるくらいさまるで遺産分配から話をそらしたくて仕方がないように見えるぜそれはどういう意味ですか主人にやましいところがあるとおっしゃいたいのですかままあまあ夏日さん話は聞いておくなあれ兄さん今は大変強気だそうじゃないそうよね去年以降空前の好景気で円は上がる一方ドルが100円に至るのだって夢物語じゃなさそうよそれに与党は来年頃に保養地整備法を成立させようっていうじゃない今や日本中のリゾート開発会社がどれだけ軍資金を集められるかって奔走してるところよ。クラウスは、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実際に、実日本国民は死に物狂いで働き高度経済成長を実現して世界で一番豊かな国民となり我が世の春を謳歌するようになった国民の消費は増大しそれを回収できる施設がアブクゼニを手にする時代になったのだよ今や国民のニーズは三種の電化製品ではないスキー場ゴルフ場総合プールリゾートホテルにテーマパーク数年前に開業したデルゼニーランドには行きたくない<笑>素晴らしい遊園地じゃないかあそこでは大人も同心に帰り家族で楽しむことができるんだかつて家族を帰り見ずにメッシ奉公することだけが美徳だった時代はもはや終わろうとしている我々は世界で一番豊かな国民としてようやくそれを享受できるようになったのだよクラウス兄さんの読みは大したもんやわしも数年前に聞いた時はそんなアホなと思ったわでもな G5 のプラザ合意聞いてから変わったんや円はみるみる強くなり地価はこれから天井知らずに上がるやろ、so、he wants to invest in stuff before the price goes up. 日本が世界経済の中心になる日も遠くはない兄さんは時代を見る目のあるお人やそれだけは間違いないで秀吉兄さんに同じだ兄貴は10年越しで時代を読めてるよその嗅覚は親父譲りだろうな大したもんだぜだが親父と違ってちょいと見通しのタイミングを読み違っちまったところはあるよな兄さんは必ず日本が好景気を迎えると信じてあちこちにリゾート計画を起こしそのほとんどで失敗し続けたわ兄さんの読み通りの時代は確かに訪れつつあるけどその時期を読むことには失敗したわね早すぎたのよそして焦って生産して結局は傷口を広げたわ本当に嗅覚が当てになって好景気が訪れることを読めていたなら生産するわけないこれって兄さんが自分で自分の才能を信じてない証拠じゃないの I guess one thing I gotta appreciate about Ava is she cuts through the bullshit and she will like everyone kind of dances around it but she just says it straight out. 失礼な主人を侮辱するつもりですか Not so his forehead creased as she rose from the sofa. Ava, paying this no heed, stared at Kraus with a confident smile. Kraus, who also maintained his confident appearance, Told Natsui to sit down. よさないか夏日昔からこういう言い方しかできないやつだ少し落ち着きなさいまた頭痛に触る兄さんに才能がない証拠は私たちのすぐ近くにもあるわよだって兄さんこの島をリゾート化するって張り切ってたじゃない
素敵なリゾートホテルも建てて庭園もきれいに整備して私は素人だから分かりかねるけど相当のお金を使ったんでしょうだから何だというのですか主人の事業はあなたとは関係ありませんいいやそいつは違うぜ夏日さん六軒島は兄貴のものじゃない親父のものだもちろん建てたホテルは兄貴のものだぜなんなら俺たちは今夜の宿泊料を払ってやってもいいさなローザそれはまあ持ち合わせで足りるなら you know, poor Rosa just getting brought into this is like the、uh... Just feel like a little, she's a little dog that just keeps getting kicked by people. Resorto Kadekiliba Konosima no Shisan Kachiwa Agaru. Shisuga Kasanda Kotowa Jijitsudanga. Mirai ni Okina Shukako Kitai de Kiru. So Nareba. Kip Kadeki no Mai Tachini Totemo Yuikina Hazajamaika. I feel like there's two people who are gonna snap、uh, of these people, two people most likely, Natsui and Rosa. Because it just feels like they're not being respected by people. それはわかるわよ。この島の価値が上がればそれを遺産分配する時の私たちの取り分も増えるもの。もちろん、島や屋敷を4分の1ずつ切り取れとは言わないわ。それを算定したお金で解決してくれればいいだけの話よ。そこまでわかっているなら、私の授業に何の不満があるんだね。不満じゃねえさ。不安なのさ。第一兄貴、あのホテル、いつになったら開業するんだこのままじゃ。俺たちの手垢だらけになっちまうぜ。そうよ。大切な商売道具でしょ。確かに開業するまでずっと鍵をかけておくわけにもいかないわよね。少しは使って風通しを良くしないと建物は傷んじゃうもの。でも、私たちが年に一度泊まるだけのゲストハウスって言うんじゃ、ちょっと合成すぎやしないかしら。ねえ、ローザー。そうね。あんなに素敵なら、オープンしたらさぞや人気が出るでしょうね。ああ、あなたが前に行ってたホテルって、ゲストハウスのことだったのね。立派なもんだろローザの言う通りオープンできたら人気が出るだろうよ。The lodging they had been guided to had, been, had not been constructed with the intent of building a guest house. It was originally constructed as a resort hotel. However, even though it had been completed two years ago, there was absolutely no schedule for it to be opened. 兄さんのいつもの事業と同じよ。着目や企画はご立派。そしていつも途中で立ち行かなくなって何も回収できずに終わるこの島をただ住むだけにしか使わないのはもったいないって兄貴の着眼は立派さそしてリゾート化してマリンスポーツやらフィッシングやらハネムーンやらを誘致して盛り上げようってのはなかなかいい絵だったと思うぜ俺だって長男だったならこの島を何かに有効利用できないかと頭をひねったに違いないさでももう出来上がってから2年も経つのよ2年経っていまだに開業のめどはつかないの任せてる管理会社はどこ Well, it doesn't this all depend on the fall on the、uh, on Kenzo dying because it's still technically his place so it's like he can't do anything until he dies so I don't know what they expect from him Plus, I don't know if they would keep this mansion、uh, and, or if they would tear this down and make it more modern because they talk about how it's very drafty because it's like an old mansion. So, the Shujin no Teoch de Varimasa! Shujin no Shimoto Ukeo Kaisha can de Tonabu ga Shoji de Rudaka de Uchiwa Hakama de Mushina Shades! Shikashina Klaus Nisan ga Makase de Ru de no Toko Amari Egua so a Kikan de. はっきり言ってあげなさいよ。不払い、横領、トラブルで計画が空中分解しちゃったって話。私たちの耳に届かないとでも思ってる裏も取れてるんだから。わお、エイヴァ、デン。何の裏だか存じませんが、事実無根です。観光業への新規参入には、方々への根回しが必要になります。相手が信用に足りるかを測ることも大事です。
それに手間取っているだけにすぎますホテルの完成が早すぎて勇み足になったことは認めようだが維持費がかかってるわけじゃないやがて大きな意味を持つ布石だ嘘つけよ生産したくても売れないだけだろう観光ルートの確立してない何もない離島にやたら豪華なホテルなんて買い手がつくわけもねえさそれに事業に集めた融資はどうなってんだよ維持費はかからんでも海鮮借金は膨らむ一方やすまんがクラウス兄さんこの島の開発計画の話ちょいと調べさせてもろたんや正直こっちもええ話は聞かへんのや秀吉さん Wow, I was gonna say, even Hideyoshi's getting it on, he seems the most chill of them all. t a s k a n i m a n o I say, Joko, the Kaomitara, so you in show Motare Lukamo Sirenoi. Dago, Korewa Senko Toshi Nano Dayo. Sono Yomi Oyamari, Korema de New Oak no Sayo Undesimata Kotova, Mitomezaru Oenoi. Dago, Yoyaku Jidanga Watashini Oitsuita, Korema de New Sina Tabun was Sumini Torimodo Ser. Ya, so de Koroka. これまでの投資だってやがては私のもとに戻ってくるそう例えるなら花たちにが酒となり超えて帰ってくるようにねそれは認めるでこれからリゾート業界は空前の好景気を迎えるやろこれまでの負債を埋められるほどかは分からんがだがなあクラス兄さんこれまで散々負け続けた兄さんがどこから軍資金を調達したっていうんやそれも半端ない軍資金やあれだけの穴を埋められる軍資金やで秀吉さんは何をおっしゃいたいのですか Wonder has Crow secretly been taking money under like from his father's nose and using that as investments and that's why he's so desperate to you know like delay paying everybody else back because he's got a Got to get that money back from what he borrowed from his father first, and then he can pay everybody back. Ah, Natsu-san, Homo Okoran to it, eh? Nah, Washira mo shirabeta in ya. Kore made make ikusa tsuzuki no Klaus Nisan ni saikin no tsuyoki na bagdai toshi o sasae rare ru hodo no iushi o dare ga dekita n ka. Shk. Kekka, i n e n da yo. Yep. そんな後ろ盾は、yep. 弱り目と逆に張るのがマネールーレットの鉄則だ兄貴はこの界隈じゃちょいと知られた弱り目さ確かに時代は好景気を迎えようとしているがこれまでの兄貴の失敗等を天秤にかけてその上で勇士に値すると思う連中がいるのかって言ったら誰もいなかったのさならねえそのお金をどこから調達したのってことになるのよほう興味深い話じゃないかそれでああなたこのような暴言をいつまで放置されるつもりですか座れよ夏日さん担当直入に言おう兄貴は親父の個人資産を自分の事業に流用してるこれはほぼ間違いねえこれが俺たちの誤解だってんならどうかぜひそれを解いてもらいたいもんさルドルフ流用なんてもんじゃないわよこれは横領よ刑事告発できる立派な犯罪なんだからブブレー極まりない仮にも後ろ宮本家後継ぎの後ろ宮クラウスに向かって信じられない暴言です I think the lady doth protest too much there. I think they're right on the money. Bogan Janaiwa, yo, Zuboshi de Sho? Nanto ka jigyo wo seko sase te, kore ma de no son shits wo ume ta in da ke do, sono ana wa hirogatte iku ippo. Bakuchi no ana wo, sara ni o k i k h a t t a bakuchi de ume ta in da ke yo. Uh, once again, my whole thing about like, is this going to be supernatural and people start dying or is it just a matter of、uh, just money just brings out the worst in people it's just already can see people are already at each other's throats well mostly them converging on kraus and natsui but、uh, i imagine there's probably going to be some infighting and then some murders coming from that その軍資金がすぐ近くにあったなら手をつけるのは道理
はっきり言うわ兄さんがしているのは横領よお父様に対する裏切りよしかるべき決着がついた後には司法に委ねることになるでしょうねそんな輩に後ろ宮本家後継ぎを名乗らせると思い言うにこと書いてと当主様への裏切りとは聞き捨てがたいこの栄光ある後ろ宮家の資金をまたぐ資格はもはやあなたにはありません即刻ここを出て行きなさいさあほら Natsui, who had already reached the limits of her anger, shouted at Ava in a rage. She then pointed alternatively at Ava at the hallway, indicating that she should leave. Ava took out a folding fan and fanned herself with it, glaring maliciously at Natsui as though silently daring her to repeat what she'd said. However, her mouth was still smiling, curved in the shape of a crescent moon. In that unpleasant silence, Rosa gulped. Nah. And then, meanwhile, the kids are out in the garden or the beach having a great old time, having no idea any of this is going on. <laughs> When I listen to her voice, all I can hear is Takana. This is just like an alternate timeline Takana. Just that same, just venom, and just that gloating voice. Oh. <laughs> Ava folded the fan with a snap and rose powerfully. Compared to the elegance and playful behavior she had shown until just now, she was unimaginably aggressive. She's probably like, you're not, even this, you're like, you're not even this family by birth, you're just the wife. And then I think Ava hinted before about Natsui. Apparently, I guess she doesn't come from a very、uh, prestigious background of her family, so she's probably going to use that. While Ava's face grimaced unattractively, her words pierced Natsui's heart like claws and painfully twisted in. <laughs> There were a hundred ways Natsui wanted to respond. However, her anger and sorrow crushed her throat. Not one of them managed to make it to her mouth. The anger, which had lost any place to go, became a single hot tear, which slowly dripped down. Oh my gosh, oh that face. Ava faced her with a provocative gaze. However, Natsui's fist was shaking. She trembled all over, unable to do anything. Kraus quietly broke the powder keg tension. Natsuki. <laughs> Natsui, resenting the fact that her husband had not come to her aid, shifted the focus of her attack. お父様からそれを受け継ぐため、日々高潔であろうとするすべての努力をないがしろにして踏みにじる。なんという聞き難い暴言。あなたもあなたです。どうして言い返さないんですかあなたが言い返さないから私が言い返しているのに、さっきからあなたは私に任せっきりで、その私に頭を冷やして来いなんて言うんですかいつも私ばかり。Yeah, she definitely has a, a complex, it sounds like, where she definitely feels like inferior to the rest of them. I have a feeling this girl's gonna pop off at some point. Ava's gonna be the first one she's gonna go after. 
いつも真剣にこの家のことを考えているのにそれはあなたは<笑><笑>ナツウィ could no longer hide her tears. She flew from the room in that state. After that, all that remained was a somewhat embarrassed mood about the parlor. When the sound of footsteps grew distant and silence returned, Crow shrugged his shoulders slightly. お、奥様。何でもあります。下がりなさい。ナツウェイ flew into her room and bent over the bed wailing. As heart wrenching sobs reached Kumasawa in the hallway. Oitashia, Oksama. Oksama to Eva Sama, Kenyan no Naka. Kono of Tari no Kanke or Setsme Surnoa. Onna no Watashiniwa, Totemo Shindok Gozaimas. Ushiromiaki wa Chio Tokuni o Monji Rademasina. Totsi de Yeo Deleva, Hondai wa Joretskara Josek Saremas. Deskara. エヴァ様も本来は秀吉様とのご成婚の際に除籍されるはずだったのですところがこれは誰のせいでもありませんましてや奥様のせいであろうはずもありません神様の気まぐれとしか言いようがありませんクラウス様と夏日様にはなかなか子宝が授からなかったのです Oh. oh, so it's because、uh, Ava and Hideyoshi had a, a son, whereas Kraus and Natsui have a daughter. And even though Jessica is technically she's next in line, I'm sure there's people being like, well, it should be George. そんな中エヴァ様に秀吉様とのご結婚の話が持ち上がりましたエヴァ様は狡猾でした奥様がいつまでも身ごもられないことにつけ入って親方様に取り入ったのです入り向こうを取って自分が跡継ぎを生むと吹き込みご自分の席を Oh, and that's why Hideyoshi took Ava's name. And that's why Hideyoshi took Ava's name. And that's why Hideyoshi took Ava's name. エヴァ様の前で弱いものであったか奥様にとってはもし自分がすぐに解任することができればエヴァ様の入り婿など親方様に認めさせずに済み今日のエヴァ様の増長を許さずに済んだだろうという悔しい気持ちがあるに違いありませんしかしそれは奥様のせいであろうはずもない。すべては気まぐれな神様とジェシカさんをお届けすることが遅れたコウノトリのせいなのでございますだからといって奥様にはそうと割り切れるはずもないただただ妻としての責務を全うできなかったことに女として悔し涙をこぼすしかできないでしょう
I wonder if she looks at Jessica and has, like, some sort of bitterness towards her. The fact that Jessica was born late and is a girl. I'm sure that's two points against her. We crossed the hall again on our way to the entrance. As we did, we once again saw that witch's portrait. However, the word saw is probably not the best word to describe that experience. It was more like our eyes were drawn to it. The woman's eyes with their sage-like glamour definitely had the power to make those who looked at her stand rooted to the spot. Majo, Beatrice, ka? Honto ka ni? Back when we had asked what this picture was, the first person to tell him it was Beatrice had been Maria. Well, Maria obviously has some sort of, like, she believes in these things. Not just that she's na naive, she seems to have almost, like, this supernatural... What was it that Battler said about how, like, kids seem to have a sixth sense about this kind of stuff? That's gotta come in at some point, whether she actually sees Beat Beatrice or not, or just believes she does. We'll have to see. Therefore, when Battler showed signs of doubt, Maria must have felt that Battler didn't have faith in her. Of course, that's not what Battler meant. Maria ran up to the portrait and began banging on a plate below it. Maybe the title of the portrait was, uh, was written there. Maria, trying to prove she wasn't lying, ostensibly continued to hit the plate. Ah, <laughs> When he patted Maria's head and apologized, she seemed to accept it, sticking out her chest and proudly ooh-ooing. Um, <laughs> Beneath the title, what looked like a long epitaph was also written. As I skimmed over it, I was taken aback by the array of unnerving words that jumped out at me. これを I think I already explained grandfather's upbringing, but let me also mention the Ushiromiya family's legend of the gold. Grandfather succeeded the Ushiromiya family after it had been almost totally destroyed in the Great Kanto earthquake. And by successfully riding the stormy seas, I don't know why I call it Kanto, it's Kanto, right? Kanto earthquake. And by successfully riding the stormy seas after the war, managed to accumulate great wealth. That much of the story everyone knows. However, this is where the strange part of the story begins. Part of it is closely tied to Grandfather's black magic hobby, so its credibility is extremely low, but... Well, wait until the end before you doubt or make fun of it. After the war, Grandfather successfully predicted what the future would hold. His big gamble paid off and he accumulated a vast store of wealth. But there is a mysterious legend about how he gained the funds in the first place. Grandfather came from a branch family and had no connections in the business world or financial world. Even though he later built connections with the occupying forces, in the beginning he was supposedly a nameless person who had not yet gained anyone's trust. Money can only be gathered based on trust. There's no way around any, uh, there's no way anyone would lend money to an untrustworthy person. 
How did Grandfather, whose trustworthiness was zero, manage to obtain the large amounts of funds in the first place? It's said that, when asked that question, Grandfather answered like this. One fateful day, I encountered the Golden Witch, Beatrice. He then went on and on about how he continued to research alchemy and techniques for summoning demons in order to become a great mage. And the entity summoned as the result of the demon calling ritual was the Golden Witch, Beatrice. He then said he made a contract where, in exchange for his own soul, he would receive fortune and honor. The witch then granted the witch granted Grandfather ten tons of gold. Grandfather used this gold as collateral to prepare a vast quantity of funds, and then used that to multiply his wealth by several times and revive the Ushiromiya family. What if Kraus ends up doing the same thing? What if he's like, he finds out, he's like, hey, maybe I'll try that. Maybe I will give up my soul to Beatrice in order to be able to have my gamble pay off. But then what will happen afterwards. It seems like he's kind of following in his grandfather and his father's footsteps where it's like he took a chance and maybe it'll pay off, maybe it won't. Maybe he will call on Beatrice. We'll see. It seems that the story is so old that our parents had already been told it when they were still children. So our parents, when they were little, explored this island in various ways, believing the gold that grandfather had received from the witch might be hidden somewhere. However, since there was the danger of them getting lost in the abandoned forest, Grandmother or someone began to spread the story that the witch lived in the forest and approaching it was too dangerous. なあ、懐かしいぜ。バカだったよな。だってよ。じいさまはその資本金で儲けたあげくで、この島を買うんだぜ。この島に来る前から黄金を持ってたってことになるじゃねえか。この島にあるわけがないぜ。そうとも限ら
とんでもない量だよ人類が有史以来発掘した黄金はせいぜい10万トンって言われてる人類の歴史が手にした黄金の1万分の1を個人が手にしてるっていうのはとてつもないことだよそれが一箇所にありしかもそれをおじい様にポンと貸し出せるような魔女ただものじゃないね私はよその10トンって数字ももはや嘘くさいと思ってるぜ第一よじい様以外に見たやつはいないんだろ Maybe there's something to the fact it's 10 tons. Maybe that's 10 tons. I was like, maybe if you move the letters around, that itself sounds like part of the riddle, if it is a riddle. Maria, who couldn't keep up and felt like she was spoken to in riddles, finally found a place where she could ask us a question. A question which I also wanted to ask right then. Whether I heard 10 kilos or 10 tons, I know it's an incredible amount, but I couldn't put a number on exactly how incredible. George Aniki folded his arms and tried to remember the market price of gold. So. Yeah, I guess they don't have、uh, phones, right? They don't have the internet, they can't just pull it up and look. <laughs> 純度や鋳造先の信用によっても変わってくる換金に手数料もかかるしただ希少金属であることは間違いなくてこのまま採掘が進めば人類はあと半世紀ほどで全てを掘り尽くしてしまうんじゃないかって憶測もあるでたらめに言って1キロあたり200万円程度の価値はあるんじゃないかと思うねヒュー私よ10キロってのは今適当に言った控えめな数字なんだけどよそれでも2000万円の価値があるってことになるじゃねえかよおおマリア体重28キロ<笑>ということはマリアちゃんと同じ重さの黄金ならその価値は5000万円を超えるって計算になるねそりゃたまげるな10トンならいくらだ10キロで2000万が1000倍だからえっとはあ200億円かこりゃたまらねえや How much is 20 billion yen actually worth? You'd have to measure it by putting it in terms we can understand. I mean, they say that wages over a lifetime are 200 million yen. You grow up and work like crazy, sacrificing your life for your company, and as you approach old age, you're finally freed. And all that together, including the retirement money, comes out at 200 million yen. In other words, that's the cash equivalent of a human's life. No, you could even call it the price of a life. This seems like foreshadowing, doesn't it? We were talking about a sum no enormous that would require a hundred of those lives. Assuming you work for 40 years from age 20 to 60, then it's equal to 4,000 years of work wages. The sum of money you could finally accumulate after working every day starting from the Joman period. <sighs> 200億円ってすごいああすげえよマリアの大好きなショートケーキだったら多分一生かかっても食い切れないくらい買えるぜでも200億円という現金ならいざ知れずそれと同等の金塊が一ところにあるなんてとても現実的とは思えないねさっきも言った通り黄金は非常に重くて財産をまとめておくにはちょっと便利とは思えないよものすごい額面の有価証券とかものすごく価値のある宝石とかそういうものなら考えられなくもないけれど戦時中の混乱期に自分の資産を持ち運べるよう全て宝石などに変えた人たちがいたのは有名な話だからねでも黄金で資産を備蓄したというのはなかなか聞かない確かに重いけどよ国際的に一番信用されてて価値も安定してるし意味はあるんじゃないのかな証券とかだったら国が滅びちまったら紙切れになっちまうわけだしそういう考え方もあるねでも1 0キログラムのインゴット一つでも体感重量は相当のものだよ聞いたことない5 0キロの人間は背負えても5 0キロの俵は担げないってそれだけの莫大な重量の金塊を個人が所有するリスクと手間は計り知れないね
ってことはつまり200億円の札束がうなってるって話ならともかく200億円分の黄金が山積みになってるってのはちょいと現実味がないわけだなそういうことになるね黄金伝説なんて響きはとても面白いんだけどそもそも10トンの黄金という時点で少々無理があるねそうやってリズムで考えるとみるみる嘘くさくなっていくぜ<笑>夢のない話さでもそこは何しろあのおじい様だからね親切なお金持ちからの融資を大げさに吹聴して魔女から授かった10トンの黄金なんて例え方をしたのかもしれないよ10トンという数字も象徴的な感じがするしねつまり借りた金のありがたさは10トンの黄金に匹敵する価値があった<笑>じい様に大金持ちの勇敢マダムが気前よく恵んでくれてその後夫人を魔女と呼んだうん、ジェシカのことは。With such an incredible ability to judge people, again, she might well be fittingly called a witch. Also, since she went to the trouble of lending all that money, she might also enthusiastically guide it how it was spent. Come to think of it, the idea to get involved with the occupying forces and profit from the Korean War demands might have come from the witch as well. With all that considered, saying he received wealth and honor from a witch might actually be a fair description. なるほどな。ってことはつまり。この魔女様は後宮家復興のための資金を恵んでくださった復興の大恩人ってわけだとなりゃじい様が感謝の気持ちを込めてこんだけでかい絵を描かせて掲げさせたってのもなるほどおかしい話じゃないのかもなひょっとするとよ当の本人は見るからに魔女っぽいばあさんだったかもしれないぜそれをじい様が美化してこんな美人に描いてくれたってのは考えられる話さ <laughs> 案外当の本人に会ってみたらこんなに美人じゃないかもしれねえな That's foreshadowing because I'm pretty sure that、uh, you know based on the fact that she's got a sprite we will be meeting her at some point and she does look like that <laughs> ありえるねベアトリーチェって名前はいかにも洋風だけど僕たち一族の名前がみんな洋風であることを考えるとこのベアトリーチェって名前も日本人名を無理やり洋風にアレンジしたものなのかもしれないよなるほどなるほどこの美人は絵の中にしかいないってわけだなそれじゃああの立派そうな胸を埋めそうにないぜ You were behaving yourself for a while my dude and then ah how well 早くから魔女なんておかしいんだよなそんなのが地球上のどこにいるってんだ As I laughed and made fun of the witch in an attempt to differentiate myself from the kid I was six years ago who was afraid of the witch of the forest Maria tugged on my sleeve. The strength with which she did so displayed a little annoyance. What? What? Maria? Beatrice is Maria stared up at me. She had on her usual sour look, but I could tell she was angry because of the color of her eyes. Maria is here! Maria is here! What? That's it. She's here. テレビをつけりゃアニメとかによ。You're playing with her, my dude. First you were saying like, oh, I believe in her, and now you're saying that you don't. Maria might go crazy and start killing people too. いいな魔女はいいな<笑> Maybe she's secretly descended from a witch, I don't know. I started to feel pressured, not knowing why Maria was jumping on me like this. Then Jessica tapped me on the shoulder and told me in a small voice. バカだな。子供の夢打ち砕いてんじゃねえぜマリアは魔女とかベアトリーゼとかが確かに存在するって信じてんだよ確かマリアちゃんは学校の文集に「将来なりたいものは魔女」って書いたんだっけおお、oh, like、マリアは何だっけ
Tears start to run from the corners of her eyes. I see, to a girl who wants to become a witch in the future. This Beatrice is proof that witches do exist in this world, and is also someone who she admires and strives to be like. <laughs> Georgia and Iki kneeled down and held Maria's head. Watching this, Jessica poked me in the side. So that's what it is. It's basically like I just dropped the bomb that Santa Claus doesn't exist. In front of a child who believes in him on Christmas Eve. I'm not the kind of guy who likes to shatter kids' dreams. Ah, uh, Except she seems to like witches, so it seems like she would want to go in the forest and see this witch. Morino,魔女。ベアトリーチに見つかってしまうかもしれないから、バス様がそう言ってたんだもんね。I stuck out my hand, and Maria grabbed it with her tiny hand, and we made up. Aw. Maria didn't grumble any more like than that, so George, Aniki, and Jessica were relieved. Shannon Chen, carrying a basket, was surprised to find us all gathered in front of the portrait. Shannon Ka! いや数十年を経ているだろうにもかかわらず、今なお心の中に大きく居座り続けているんだから、それは今なお虜にしているということなんだろうね。やれやれ、これじゃ、ばあ様はさぞや嫉妬しただろうぜ。私はよく知らねえけ
しかもそいつをじいさまは怪しげな碑文に書き残し「未公有ロマンはあった方がいいってもんさ」200億円の黄金か。<笑>私たち4人で山分けしたってとんでもない金額になるな一人頭50億円かすごいねそれだけあったらどんな事業でも起こせそうだよいやそもそも働かずに生涯を優雅に過ごせるだろうねうんうん I think you could do it on less than 5 billion yen. Just live your life comfortably. Maria, you are a good cookie. But, I'm going to get a good cookie. I'm going to get a good cookie. So, I was expecting some family drama, but、uh, wow, I was、uh, not disappointed. It happened sooner than I was expecting. So, oh, I imagine it's going to be a little bit of an awkward dinner coming up, and the kids have no idea. About this, and then of course, there's this whole thing about more about Beatrice. This riddle with the gold is it real? Is it not? Does she exist? Does she not? We'll have to wait and see. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons Nana, Sparky, Icognito, Mad Goldsmith, Harry Gaziff, and Asborn Kennedy.